on the board, we have an individual, a BCE member, making $2,569.61 a month. Their expenses are $2,989.69. Let me say that again. $2,989.69. But I'm only bringing in 25. So that's the, uh, that's a, that's a situation right there in it of itself. But we're going to, we're going to work through that. So I've, I've dealt with this multiple times where people are running negatives. Um, and there's ways out. There is. Just got to run the math. Just got to run the numbers, right? Total debt. In this person's situation, according to the numbers that they sent me, two hundred eleven thousand nine hundred three seventy-six negative cash flow, four hundred twenty dollars and eight cents. Okay. In addition to their four major numbers, that's the first thing we got to gather. What are your four major numbers? What's coming in? What's going out? Total debt and what's left over that discretionary income or AKA cash flow. Next thing in their uh, uh, situation, based on what they sent me was the uh, cash on hand. Some of you may also refer to this as your sinking funds, your emergency fund, your savings account. I kind of just look at it as, as cash liquidity, cash on hand, totaling amongst this person's different bank accounts, $9,680.29. In terms of assets, the only thing that they listed was a thrift savings plan that's typically with the government so i'm assuming that this person either works with uh, maybe department of education or government uh, some type of branch in the government or maybe in their municipality city it's usually where i see those tsc tsp plans that's like another version of a 401k very very similar and they have 280 grand in that account um, what's very interesting in the velocity banking world is we could use just about anything that is worth value or is an asset that we could collateralize for a line of credit. Whereas most people will go out and get loans, amortized loans against their assets. Very few people know about the line of credit option where you could collateralize your asset without sacrificing the asset without putting the asset at risk you could have the money work in two different locations and this could be done with your 401ks possibly 403bs um, really any type of retired uh, re qualified retirement account with a certain amount of money built up inside All right after you get to a certain threshold there's usually um, a limitation as to how much we could get but in this particular situation they're nearly at 300k so i don't see why we could get anywhere from 40 to 50 percent of that in the form of a line of credit instead of a loan although a loan is is very possible i've had clients do it but uh lines of credits does offer more flexibility okay going over the debts they've got two different credit cards this one right here the 279324 they're paying 58 bucks a month it's at zero percent till next year right? So whenever I have a debt that is on 0%, I will usually ignore it. It's not charging me any interest. So I'm going to pay the monthly minimum payment, right? Next as a credit card, 8,246, 3.99%. This is a loan. Then they got their mortgage, 144K, 3.13% amortized. And then a student loan, no payments at the moment. But when it kicks back in, I think later this year, they will be paying 408.65 mortgage value is 260 grand and they have a credit score really good uh anywhere from 786 to as high as 825 across the three credit bureaus so now that i have this person's all their numbers i am looking at opportunities according to the numbers the first opportunity that i see according to the numbers they have a mortgage and they have quite a bit of equity built up in the property according to the value that they uh, gave me. So if this number is true, right, I could potentially get a what's called a first lien HELOC, right? And just to remind everybody what a first lien HELOC is, if you did not attend last week, first lien HELOC is a replacement of a first lien mortgage, right? So instead of having an amortized first lien fixed 
30 year mortgage, you would have a first lien home equity line of credit where you are charged uh, interest only payments typically, right? Sometimes it is interest and principal payments. They're basically the same thing. If you're being, if you are dealing with a first lien HELOC that is interest only payments, that just simply means that you're only required to pay the monthly interest, the monthly interest for each and every month of that first lien HELOC. And if you were to only pay the interest payments from month to month, understand that you're not actually paying down the loan at all because you're just covering the interest. This is a strategy that some real estate investors will use to maximize cash flow through their rental income that they receive because maybe they have no intent to actually pay off the property because maybe they're going to sell it later, right? Maybe they're going to refinance it into a conventional loan of some sort. Maybe they're acquiring a property as a under a first lien HELOC and then they're going to do repairs and then they're going to flip it. So sometimes uh, that can be very effective. Now, if the intent, and I'm assuming for this person here, if the intent is to get out of debt, to become debt free, to take control of their personal finances, this is like one of the steps, one of the goals that they have. It's usually the case with most of my clients. They want to remove, pay down, get rid of debt, put them in a better financial position then we do have the intent of paying down whatever it is that we're leveraging, right? That's the goal. So first opportunity I see, first lien HELOC, anywhere from 190 to 230K. Um, the only limitations that I see with that, them getting approved for first lien HELOC is their uh, income being so low, the DTI, although they have great credit, right? bank may want to see some other things and this is where you can't just you know i can't just say go to this bank right sign up for this bank we want to be having conversations with the bank over and over again we want to be calling the banks the local credit unions in our local areas and we want to have conversations we want to go to have meetings sit down with them at the bank what are all your requirements to get approved for your product, first lien HELOC, second lien HELOC, credit card, P lock, whatever it is, secure line of credit, whatever it is. What are the requirements? What do you like to see? Do I need to have a relationship with you first? Which just simply means that you open up a bank account, checking a savings, move some money over, right? It is very important to get the information from the source and not anyone else, including myself, right? I'm just, I'm giving you the information to come to the table with once you're at the source. But I would not rely on anyone on YouTube saying, go to this bank, go to that bank, or here's a list, right, of good banks. I, I, I can do the same thing, and I have, but I always with that transparency, I'm like, look, make sure you're asking, reiterating these questions because banks will change their requirements, their credit uh, requirements. Sometimes they'll increase it, then they'll go, decrease it sometimes bank will banks will just stop offering that particular debt tool that we're going after so it would really suck if you find a bank go on their website you see it home equity line of credit interest rate da 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 whatever put an application in online and then you get a response saying at the moment we are not offering any HELOCs and you're like but it's on your website right that's happened before so that's why I like to get a human on the phone or go right to the branch, talk to the person that actually issues HELOCs, right? The loan officer that communicates with the underwriter and get all the information I possibly can, take all the guessing work out of it before I risk my, my credit. So that is the first uh, opportunity that I see. They could either get a first lien HELOC where they literally replace the entire mortgage right so this would be gone the 874 80 gone the 3.13% gone and then it get moved into let's say a first lien HELOC where the credit limit might be anywhere between say somewhere around 190 being the lowest to 230k the way i got these numbers was i simply did uh 70% 70 75% of the 
loan to value, right? 70% of the value of the property, right? Times it by say 70% or as high as 90%. Some banks go as high as 95% LTV, which is pretty cool, right? But again, you're getting this information from the source, not, not me. You're going directly to the bank to get that information, all right? So that's the first opportunity that I see. If that was the case for this person here, if they were to go this route, they do their homework, let's say everything works out fine. Um, according to the research I've been doing, average HELOC rates that I've seen with clients today are ranging between as low as four, three percent to as high as six and six and a half upwards of seven percent. I haven't really seen seven, seven and a half yet, but I do know those numbers are going up. Now, the goal is obviously to find the lowest rate that I can find, but on the same token, like I mentioned last week, the, the rate that the bank gives me is not nearly as important as the tool itself, the line of credit itself, and what I'm gonna be doing with it and, and how I can bring whatever that rate is, let's say, um, I'll just, I'll just double it from, from this or right, a little more than double. Let's say she got six and a half percent, this, this, this person, right? Well, um, that's what the bank gave this individual, but what do I actually end up paying on a month to month basis? And our goal is to get that number to as close to 0% as possible, anywhere from one to 2%. If we can get it below the three, right? Even if we get it equal to three, it's still less interest that you're paying. And this was something that in the very first session was uh, covered is, you know, 3.13 amortized is not really 3%, right? It's like quadruple that. It, it's way higher when you look at the amortization schedule. So being able to remove it in one shot and then bring it over to an environment where I can manipulate the rate below an actual 3% cost, I put you in a very good position, right? The other thing that can happen when we uh, obtain a first lien HELOC is typically if the person was paying PMI, right? Or if you're, if you're having escrow payments automatically come out each and every month, guess what? All those dollars come back to you, right? And that money can sit in the HELOC effectively manipulating that rate, right? On the debt itself. And then at the end of the year, boom, you pay escrow yourself. So instead of having your escrow money sit in an account all year doing nothing, and then it pays the taxes, you could have that money sitting in your HELOC and it manipulates the borrowing cost down all throughout the year. And then you pull from the HELOC to pay the bill when it's due, right? Same thing with your um, paychecks. Most of you who are employees, you could fix your, I think it's W-4 if I'm not mistaken. You can fix how much you're giving to the IRS each and every paycheck, right? The goal, mentioned this last week, the goal is to have um, no refund at the end of the year and you don't wanna owe any tax at the end of the year. You want it to just be flat, you're done. You filed, that's it. You don't get nothing back nor do you pay nothing too, right? When you do that, you're no longer overpaying the IRS each and every year. That's the whole reason why you got a refund is because you tipped the IRS. You gave them a tip and they didn't do anything for you. They spent your money recklessly. They put your country into multiple trillions of dollars of debt. They promise you welfare plans and government plans and this plan and that plan that you don't really ever much see. And if you do see it, it's poor customer service. So, I mean, we can go on and on at how poor Lee management that our systems operate in that we pay tons of money into. So the last thing you want to be doing is overpaying the IRS. And this is why entrepreneurs and business owners succeed and get this. One of the main priorities when you convert from the E and the S quadrant, you go over to the business side is to reduce that tax liability because it's your number one expense, right? So that would be another uh, uh, way to help this individual, right? When I'm dealing with cases where people are coming to me with negative uh, numbers, um, I try to think outside the box. We have to, like, how do we get back to even Steven positive cash flow as quickly as possible? And in many cases, 
having a debt tool can absolutely accelerate that pretty quickly and can also avoid this person going into more debt to survive, right? Most people, when they hit negative, they go to freaking, uh, what's that store? Uh, where they do them payday loans. Anybody know what that is? Them payday loans. What, Amscot, is that what it's called? It's a bunch of them. Listen, stop going to that crap. I know it's right next to your neighborhood. Stop going to that crap. They are, they is killing you, right? And then the liquor store is right next to it. Terrible, right? It's strategically set up in the minority neighborhoods, strategically, strategically set up right next to the liquor store, right next to the gas station, right? Just messing you up right next to the, what do you call them clubs? The strip clubs right next to them, right? Boom. Get into debt, waste your money on sex and drugs, rinse and repeat, work for the work for Satan, right? Monday through Friday, do it all over again to release your stress, right? I know I just hit some chords. Right. I just I just offended three people in the room. But the reality is that you have to think outside the box, rely on Holy Spirit to to work through you and say, hey, go this route. Talk to this person. Go to this resource. There are so many other alternative, better resources than you could possibly imagine that you could be tapping into. Right. To re either redirect cash flow, put yourself in a better financial position. So we before we make the the quick response, the quick reaction, the the ad on the television, right? Be wary of the easy stuff, right? The easiest stuff where it's like right next to you, right around the corner, right? Stop that. They're killing you with the interest rates. They're amortizing. They're deducting your paychecks. It's horrible, right? You don't want to do none of that. You want to look for the hard stuff, the stuff that's hard to find, right? You want to look for stuff that requires you to do some work, and you will be amazed by the different things that we could we could possibly get involved in. And I've had my clients do this where they tell me stories of how they they went to their church. They went to, you know, a nonprofit organization that helps people start businesses or receive grants, you know, simply because of the color of their skin. Right. To to regain what they lost. Right. There's, oh, boy. Let me stop. Come back and start preaching. So. Numbers, got to know your numbers, went over the debts. Based on the numbers, I look for opportunities for this person. They got the HELOC, that's a potential option, right? First lien or second, I would prefer first. I think they could do a lot of damage simply because now we've got access to equity straight up front that we could use to wipe out some debts to get the, the cash flow from negative back to you know, even Steven, and then potentially positive while simultaneously to also redirect cash flow. I wrote some things over here, talked about, you know, not overpaying the IRS, right? Fix your W4, potentially increasing work hours at the place you already uh, work at. That could be an option. This is, um, you know, cutting off subscriptions. There's a, there's an amazing stat out there regarding Americans spend about eight to nine hundred dollars a year. I mean, a month on subscriptions, right? That's your Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, da da da, right? Even other subscriptions like your groceries, um, Uber Eats, um, Uber, Lyft, right? Everything nowadays has a subscription. There's like subscriptions everywhere now, right? It's a great business model when you're on the other end, not when you're on the consuming end. Not that great. The bills add up. So if I'm willing to cut off cable, right? If I'm willing to cut off Disney Plus and Netflix and Hulu for just a period of time, like I'm not radical like my, like my grandpa Dave Ramsey is, you know, rice and bean diet. I'm not that radical with it, right? But I am saying, hey, potentially we could go into conservation mode. Keep what is needed. Keep what is needed. Say, for example, like this membership, that's like extremely important or your tithing or your offerings and your givings, right? Or your subscription to any type of educational material. Like let that be your substitute for Netflix and, and Hulu and Disney and cable is straight education right? You could save a lot of money there. So any waste, right? That we could cut off to potentially reduce that number just for a period of time. Cause I don't want to form a culture of cheapness, right? And, and greed, right? Even when you're poor, you can be greedy, right? Even when you're broke, 
even when you're making low middle class income, you can be greedy. The way you're being greedy is by not fulfilling and walking your purpose, by living in the shame and the guilt and the curse that you chose to live in, that you continue to choose to live in instead of stepping out into the out of your comfort zone, stepping out of the box and asking for help so that you may receive the help you need, right? Um, this is really cool. Another thing that I put here is called a ROBS, stands for Roll Over Business Startup. This person could take their potential, potentially, I'm not sure, but I have seen this done with 401ks. I'm not sure if it could be done with a TSP, but you could roll over that 280 grand into a business startup, which could be used to generate cash flow to change the trajectory of this person's finances within six to 12 months can provide the capital needed to put this person in a better financial position without having to pay early uh, retirement, early penalty fees, right? So you may wanna look that up. That's a pretty cool option. I have a resource for that I will put in the chat. So I'll put that in the chat. That's a, a phenomenal resource, someone I know that uh, has helped some of my clients do this. Um, but coming back to the home equity line of credit, let's say this person was able to obtain the debt tool, great. From there, I would immediately um, reallocate this debt and this loan, 246 and 178, 3.99, 6.99, I believe 6.99 is amortized, 3.99 is simple interest, but we're getting that cash flow, moving it into a line, and then we can reuse the credit card to run bills to recapture some cash flow, right? Through cashback rewards. So that's the only reason why I would do that. Normally, I would probably leave it there if the rate is in fact lower than what they get approved for. Chances are, with this really good credit score, they could potentially get an introductory rate of less than 3.99. I've seen 2.99, I've seen two and a half, two, 1.99 for a period of time. And that could really buy us some time, put us in a better position. I would also move this money, that cash on hand is not doing anything. I would also move it into the HELOC if I were to get approved. And I can have that money knocking down the debt, putting me in a better financial position, right? Cutting off contributions. If, the, if you are someone that is running a negative or like a net zero, let's say, and you're putting money in a retirement account, earning average six, seven, eight percent, whatever your financial advisor tells you, the reality is when you look at the internal rate of return after taxes, inflation, and costs, you're more so netting two to four percent if you're lucky. In many cases, people are coming out negative sometimes, not even realizing it because over a long period of time, it's a positive average. But just having one financial loss in an account this large, I could go from having 300 grand and losing 15% of that in say one year, but it would take me multiple years just to recover or come back to what I last was at, right? So if I lose 10% of say 300 grand, right? Boom, now I'm at 270. Well, you're gonna have to earn higher than 10% in just one year to come back to the three. And that's just breaking even. What's the likelihood of that actually happening? So when I work with clients, I'm like, look, temporarily we could cut off contributions to your retirement account to increase cash flow and to recover multiple double digit interest returns as well as multiple hundreds of dollars of cash flows today as opposed to waiting for it when you're old and gray, right? Let's get it today. So that when you're old and gray, there's plenty of cash flow, right? So that's one opportunity. If they don't go the first lien HELOC route, we could potentially get what's called a securities backed line of credit or an asset backed line of credit, right? That's usually the terms that they use might also use the term margin account where they would take a portion of this asset that you have and they would put it in a i believe what's called a margin account margin loan and you can access a line a percentage of your asset 280 say 40 50 percent of that number right and then i could get typically with secured assets secured lines of credits usually the rates are like two and three and four percent or lower very very low and i could use that to say get rid of these two debts move my cash into the line and try to come back to a, 
a positive cash flow, right? So with the help of restructuring debt, consolidation, mixed with velocity, and then these tools right here to get back to a net positive, as well as focusing on how can I bring in more money? How can I bring in more money? Is that starting a business, that picking up a new skill? Is it working more hours? What, what can I be doing? How can I use the skills, gifts, and talents that God gave me and monetize it in the marketplace, right? God gives us gifts, talents, skills, right? And we are called out and we are to, in other words, monetize our gifts and get paid abundantly for it, right? If we rightly divide the word of truth, you will begin to see the book, not only as a religious text or historical text, but rather a constitution that comes with promises and covenants laws and bylaws and statutes and limitations and regulations on how to run a kingdom if you read the book that way you just might receive your next revelation you just might receive your next miracle you just might receive your next blessing when you operate in kingdom kingdom not a religion to truly operate in kingdom is to monetize your gifts and your skills and get paid abundantly for it where therefore you can then be uh, very easily a cheerful giver and giving is the first step to wealth multiplication not just wealth creation wealth multiplication first step is giving this person gave their numbers gave their time gave their efforts it's not always money they gave their time their efforts their grace their attention right their focus right they even wrote a nice email saying bless you denzel thank you for what you do for this community da, da, da. here's my numbers i hope i gave you everything i could i'm like you gave me a lot for for someone that is just coming across for the first time you gave me a lot of information love it can't wait to have a discussion with them can't wait to bless this person right so this is what i see so far they could go the first lane heloc route in addition they could maybe get either the, the TSP loan options also on the table. I've seen TSP loans as low as like 1%, like one and a half, 1.75%. That is extremely low. And if that meant just temporarily moving some debts over here to 1.75 and having a much lower payment requirement to, to potentially get to a net zero, right? Then I would consider it. Um, or this thing the, the rollover business startup where they could say listen this 280 grand isn't helping you right now so let's put it to work what is your skills what are your gifts what are your talents what is god's purpose for your life what is god's purpose for your life well once you know what god's purpose is for your life i doubt it exists in the stock market that's just the truth i doubt it exists on charts i think your gift your purpose that god has for you is is in the marketplace working with people helping them grow and then getting to a point where you your asset could be on the stock market rather than you sending your 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 little dollars right that most of us make these little dollars and throwing it into hopes and dreams without an actual plan right if somebody wants to learn the stock market i would rather read as many books as i can on the stock market I would rather go into communities that talk stock market every day, that read charts every single day. I'd rather spend a couple dollars reading books, being a part of communities, and me becoming my own financial advisor rather than paying astronomical fees for little dollars. I could understand if you was a multimillionaire, then it makes sense to spread that money around so that you're, you're protecting the money from yourself. I understand that. But when I'm dealing with people who are making 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 20 K a year, under a hundred K a year, what are you doing paying someone three, four, five percent in account management fees and just annual fees and costs? What, what, what are you doing? When you could spend that cost in a book, right? And potentially increase your return by quadruple because now you know how the stock market actually works. You know where the rigs are. You know how to look for cash flow. You know how to do options. Or maybe you're like, the heck with the stock market. Let me look at Forex. That's where the real money's at. Over a trillion plus dollars gets moved every single day. So maybe you're like, let me learn that instead. Or maybe you're like, hey, my God told me according to my purpose for his will is to start this business. And here you've got 
you know, the assets to go ahead and move that money over and get it started. And that could potentially bring in an extra 500 to a thousand bucks a month, right? There's a lot of opportunities in the, in the marketplace right now, whether it's to become an influencer, whether it's to do affiliate marketing, referral marketing, network marketing, direct sales, um, you name it, commission base, right? Equity base to improve these, these four major numbers, which in return improves the, the debt situation, right? So that is, uh, in a nutshell for the case study itself, right? And I'll do a recap on the debt tools just so you um, have them i did them last week but we can do it again right you've got the credit cards when it comes to credit cards i do like the credit unions right when you go to credit unions in your local area not only do they offer zero percent on purchases and balance transfers but there are some of these credit union banks that will offer zero percent on the balance transfer fee some credit cards function exactly like a line of credit where you could in fact dump all your income in to a credit card and do in other words convenience checks balance transfers or cash advances right i don't typically like the cash advances because they typically will raise the rate on you right and with a fee potentially and there's usually a limitation as to how much you can take out but when you do a convenience check and you ask for that convenience checks or balance transfers there usually is no limitation as to how much i can pull out of the credit card itself and if there's no fee to do it well now in a situation like this their 2500 could say go into a credit card and they could pull out 874.80 and these other payments that cannot be paid with a credit card directly but through a convenience check or balance transfer right convenience check or balance transfer with no fee you can now turn credit into cash the cash is now in your checking account the checking account pays the bill that wouldn't be able to be paid with a credit card okay there are some bigger banks i think chase or city might have a card like that i think don't know for sure um now when it comes to the bigger banks i've seen them typically give bigger lines than the smaller banks so that could be an you know advantage there discover and capital one bank of america like these bigger institutions sometimes will hand out more credit and that's cool could work not against it just got to run the numbers run the costs make sure it makes sense after uh, uh, credit cards you've got the good old p locks or secured personal line of credit these rates tend to be so what i usually see as low as five six percent upwards of like 12 percent and higher once we get past an interest rate of 12 and 15 and up many of the times i won't even take it because i know by just improving that person's credit score going to a different bank i can find a lower rate so i rather not just stop at the first option i rather explore and shop around my goal is to find when I'm working with clients that are going to get a personal line of credit, I try to get below 10% every single time, right? 12 is like, oh, it's pushing it. 15, I'm like, I'm out. I don't want to do it, right? Personal line of credit, unsecured, got to have credit for that. If it's secured, that simply means you've got capital, right? For that. Then there is the HELOC, okay? Now, there's many different iterations of HELOCs. More, most importantly, when you are applying for a home equity line of credit, it is extremely important to read between the lines. You must read the terms and agreements. Please, 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 please put it in the chat. Read the terms and agreements. It's just like reading your word. How are you going to know what the word says if you don't read the word? How are you going to know what it says? By just listening to your pastor? Mm -mm. That ain't safe. That ain't safe. So same thing. Dealing with the banks, just because the person on the phone said that it was a HELOC, and it turns out to be a home equity loan, okay? Understand that they are trained a certain way to not reveal, typically, not even sell, not even push these, these options because the banks tend to make less profit, less money on it. Now, there are some banks, right? There are some banks that are in favor of HELOCs. Those are a little bit harder to find. I have a relationship with a bank called first savings bank i forgot what state they're in 
the only states that I know they do not serve is Texas and Hawaii. So if anybody lives in Texas or Hawaii, this particular bank would not be for you, right? Now, when it comes to Texas, most of the home equity lines of credits, not home equity loans, a good amount of the home equity lines of credits in Texas have a, uh, a limitation where they'll say, okay, every time you withdraw funds, it has to be a minimum of $4,000. Okay. So if you're trying to just make a withdrawal to pay your mortgage, that's only a thousand bucks or 1500 bucks, you'd have to pull out four grand, right? And then send three grand back in or 3,500 back in and then cover your expense. So typically if you're in the state of Texas, and I am working with clients. I have plenty of clients who have debt tools in Texas. There's no issue of getting it. Some have this restriction. What we will do is we will try to group our expenses together in, in a month, right? We try to group their expenses next to their mortgage, next to their card payment, next to their subscriptions, kind of group it all together. This way, when we make a chunk, let's say they made a chunk of like 30, 40, 50 grand, right? They remove debts. Wonderful. They um redirect the cash flow cool right and now you're getting ready to dump all your income in but now you got to pull money out to pay bills and now you've got this restriction four grand right this is usually only in the state of texas the way around this it's like i said we group our expenses together where you know we withdraw four grand and it lasts for that period and maybe they only have to do it twice and we also will run bills through a credit card to to uh run up the balance close to that number and then we're able to uh, knock out the credit card this way we're not doing so many withdrawals of a mandatory four grand okay that's just typically in the state of texas okay now this applies to everywhere all over the u.s where sometimes in the terms and agreements they'll say hey hey teresa um you're applying for a heloc great um, and they won't tell you this until you actually apply, get approved, and then they show you, right? But if you are to ask in advance, then you would know. But if you don't know to ask, then you get blindsided. And here's what they'll say. Teresa, you have to pull out 25 grand initially, and you have to maintain this balance for 12 months, right? And you have to set up auto pay for those 12 months. And if you pay this balance off early, before the 12 months, then you're going to get hit with additional fees and penalties, right? And some of those fees and costs will vary. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll say, hey, no closing costs, no fees, no origination fees, no, no nothing. Granted, provided you maintain this balance for 12 months. If not, you have to pay the appraisal fee, the application fee, da 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 fee, da da da. And it, sometimes it can add up and that might not be uh, as advantageous. Recently dealt with a client that had to deal with this, right? A way around it this can work as I say, well, they said maintain the balance of 25K, right? They said maintain it. Okay. Can I pay off $24,999.99, right? Like you could literally ask them that, hey, can I bring this balance all the way down to a dollar, but not fully paid off? Would I then be charged a fee? Because technically, if you set up auto pay, aren't you technically paying down the balance of the 25K? The answer is yes, you are. They're having you set up auto pay to pay down that balance. But if we're doing velocity banking, we're dumping all our income in, taking expenses out, cash flow stays. Well, guess what? That balance is going to go down faster. So all I tell my client is don't let it go to zero. Simple, right? Easy way around that little hassle. Don't let it go to zero. As soon as it hits like a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollar balance, we're getting ready to make that next chunk amount towards debt. And once we pass that threshold, 12 months, 24 months, whatever it is, then we're kind of free at that point, right? These are little things that do not get discussed that you will never see many people talking about this on YouTube. Very, very rare, right? But you're getting it from your very own finance geek, right? Because I've done the work, I've done the homework, seen it hundreds of times over and over again, right? And once you know a thing, you're no longer afraid of the thing. This, this has no authority over me, nor any of my clients. They read the terms and agreements, anything they don't understand, they go to the source. Just like anything you don't understand about your life or your purpose, guess who you go to? The source. You're gonna go to your, you're gonna go to an online pastor to find out what it is about your gifts? No, that's dangerous, that ain't safe. But if you go to the source and you set up a business meeting with Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, God the Father, and you gather in common unity where two or more are gathered together, hmm, potentially, 
That is according to kingdom regulations and protocols. Look at your Bible and it will reveal to you how to approach the king in such a way where you petition in his name, oh my goodness, to receive what it is that you need to see to move over. Yes, works the same way when we're dealing with finance. Go to the source, ladies and gentlemen. Stop playing around with uh, these influencers like myself. I'm even putting myself on, on the spot. Stop fooling around. Go to the source, get the information, and then leverage an expert like a me or like a Mary or like a Teresa or like people in this community. Leverage to then move forward. But don't rely on a sub source, on a, on a resource. Rely on the source, right, to move forward. My goodness. So coming back, HELOCs, home equity line of credit. There's a lot of different iterations. The two most primary ones are first and second lean HELOCs, right? Those are the two most commonly known uh, HELOCs, home equity line of credit. And again, first lien HELOC is literally a replacement of a first lien mortgage. So you would not have a 30 year fixed mortgage. You would have a 10 to 20 year home equity line of credit, simple interest with a 10, 20 year draw potentially. And then it would convert after 10 years, 20 years, after the draw period, that's what that's called. I'll write it down, All right? So the draw period is the period that you can take money in and out of the line of credit without any uh, uh, repercussions. Once that draw period is over, it goes from simple interest to amortize. The last thing you want is to have an existing balance in the draw period as it's expiring, and then it converts to an amortized fixed loan rate and now the money's locked up and now you can't access it right so typically when we're doing velocity banking our timeline is between five to seven years or less to become completely debt free so you've got an additional five years if you got a 10 year draw you get debt free in five to seven you've got additional five three more years left to then step into the uh, investment world and the debt leveraging world uh, to accumulate cash flow right so you pay attention to the draw period. Typically, draw periods are 10 years. Typically, most. Some go as high as 20. Some are 30, right? And that is a very strategic tool that you will not see too highly promoted in the marketplace. That is called an all in one loan, okay? And I put the resource, I put a video for that as well. You scroll up, you'll see the resource I put in there. You do have my email. You do have access to me in case you're like, hey, I didn't see it or whatever. Let me know. It's on my YouTube channel. You could type in all in one loan. In fact, let me just go ahead and start sharing my screen so that we don't get confused. Here we go here. Okay. So if you were to type all in one loan on YouTube, what comes up for me is this guy right here. He'll talk about it. But then there's this guy. You know who that is. Breaking down the all in one loan. All in one loan. Your questions answered. Right. And there's there's some other pretty good videos. Boom. Here's another one all in one loan simulation, like actually going through a whole scenario. Pretty cool. Uh, I like this guy, Mike Adams. Him and I are uh, acquaintances. We've spoke before. He's got some really good content. I think he covers it as well. Um, now the company can write it down. The company is called CMG Financial, right? That's the, the company's name, right? Now they, uh, let me see, what am I doing? Come back to the board. I'll write it. <clears throat> In every state, I think, there will be a loan officer that offers the product. So CMG Financial, right, is the source providing what's called the all-in-one loan, right? They will partner with private banks, private lenders to give you access to what is called an all-in-one loan. An all-in-one loan is technically a first lien HELOC. The difference between a first lien HELOC and an all-in-one loan is with the all-in-one loan, it is a mortgage, it's a checking account, right? And it's a HELOC, all-in-one. So when you get the account, you'll see the mortgage balance, let's say it's 500 grand, right? You could get a property instead of putting um, money down and then getting a conventional 30-year or 15-year fixed, you could get a property using this all-in-one loan strategy. Right, so let's say the property is 500K and there's rules, um, 
there's heftier requirements to actually get approved. So this is definitely not for everyone. It's a limited product. You have got to qualify for it. You have to have at least 20% down. And then I think an additional 10% in reserves according to what you're applying for. But let's say that's the value, the debt, the 500K, the money that gets put down becomes a HELOC instantaneously, right? Of which you have checking account features and benefits, meaning you can easily, very easily move all your income into the line itself. You can have your bills come out of the line itself, right? And the other cool part uh, with the all-in-one loan is really the way they charge the interest. With a first lien HELOC, whenever I pay money into a HELOC, I'm going to get charged interest every time money goes in to a first lien HELOC. So if this person on the board was to get approved for a first lien HELOC, right? And let me know in the comments if this is really good stuff. I just saw someone put amazing information. It's powerful. Love it. But, you know, let me know if I'm on the right track here. If you're like, OK, I got a lot of work to do. Right. Just let me know if this is really hitting. Uh, so let's say with a first lien HELOC, you took out 50 grand at 5%, right? Well, 50,000 times 5% divide by 365. Daily interest rate is going to be $6.08 times. Let's just say you had it outstanding for seven days. So you're going to get charged $47.94 the moment you put money back in, right? Let's say you get a paycheck for three grand, right? When money goes in, 3,000 goes in, of that 3,047.94 goes to interest. Versus all in one loan, same 50 grand, say 5%, same interest rate, whatever. But when you pay in three grand, all of it is principal. Every single time money goes into the all in one loan product, it is principal until the due date right so say the due date is the first of every month let's say you took out 50k seven days later you put 3k in right the interest is being calculated daily but understand that the three grand once it goes in right 100 percent principal before the due date when the due date arrives they pull out the payment right the which is just interest only it's just an interest only payment right interest only payment on the due date and that rate would be slightly less than a traditional first lien heloc right or a second lien heloc or a line of credit there's a little advantage there also with an all-in-one loan let's say you lose your job right you could actually stop making payments for a period of time right and that could be very beneficial okay not something that makes me say yes over a first lien but it's just something hey it's good to know the other thing is as the original balance say it was 500k you put 20 percent down you immediately have access to a portion of that uh, a heloc i believe it's 90 percent of whatever the equity is as you're paying it down the property through velocity banking as you're paying it down your credit line automatically increases right over a 10 year period if i'm not mistaken and then after 10 years the line of credit starts to shrink okay i might be incorrect there it might be a little bit longer but that is um a very strategic product uh, something that's very cool about the all-in-one loan is they've never had a client default on an all-in-one loan product. So literally all of their clients have either paid off their properties or are in the process of paying off their properties. They've never had their HELOCs frozen. It is one of the safest, I would argue, one of the safest products in the marketplace in terms of leverage. They've literally never had a client default on the loan. And it's been out for over 15 years, if I'm not mistaken. Now, with First Savings Bank, this is a direct competitor to all-in-one loan. First Savings Bank, they offer very similar in terms of how this operates. In my opinion, this one operates a little bit better because they have something called a sweep account, which is pretty interesting. And so I will map that out terms of how that product works and again the resource has already been put in the chat and i think um, moderators of bce were reposting the link so i do appreciate that with a 
first lien HELOC at first savings bank. Same structure, it's a first lien HELOC. Let's use the same number, 500K. All right, say anywhere from probably now, I think their rates are a little bit higher than all in one loan, but they have something called what's called a sweep feature. So basically everything that all in one loan does, but with their product, they have the first lien HELOC and it's a checking account, right? When money goes in to the HELOC, same thing like all in one, it's principal every single time as it relates to money coming out of the line of credit out of the HELOC what they do through the checking account function instead of having money come out of the HELOC they will automatically let the checking account of the HELOC itself they will let it go negative and at the end of the day say when it hits 12 a.m right when the clock strikes 12 a.m the end of the day they'll just move money automatically for you from the HELOC portion of the product itself so what that does it keeps money in the HELOC for literally as long as humanly possible as opposed to you doing it right so typically with a second lien first lien HELOC from majority of the banks you've got to pull money out and pay bills manually or PLOCs or credit cards you got to pull money out manually pay your bill so you have to time it versus in here they kind of do it for you they let the account withdraw there's no fee when that happens so your account looks negative but by the end of the day it literally goes back up to exact zero right so if two thousand five hundred dollars worth of bills came out on monday the checking account option would be negative 2,500 and by 12 a.m. they only pull out 2,500 bucks so you're at zero so your checking account is literally with the first lien HELOC always at zero and they're literally maximizing every single dollar uh, staying in the HELOC for as long as humanly possible and that's like completely automated right so that is another option right there these two products are more rare and have more requirements to get approved for Right, so a little bit more rare, more requirements. So therefore, some, many, in a lot of cases, may not get approved for it. That's fine, that's cool. We can work up to these products later on. There are a lot of banks that do first and second lien HELOCs. But be sure to read the terms and agreements. Are there any limitations to the HELOC? Meaning, do I am I required to pull out a certain amount of money every single time I withdraw money? Am I required to pull out a substantial amount of money day one and keep that balance right you can negotiate your way out of these things or simply go to a different bank where you don't have to deal with that pressure right good stuff okay let's see um then you've got the asset backed line of credit or securities backed line of credit and there's two banks that i've come across so far that will uh, offer this and this is not at every bank although you can do your research and ask all right it's important go to the source just ask hey such and such banker do you guys offer such and such um <clears throat> so where was i, I don't want to lose my train of thought here <laughs> securities backed line of credit securities backed line of credit this is for people in the house who've got their you've got your qualified retirement accounts 300 400 800 million dollars built up in there it ain't doing nothing for you right you're hoping and praying that's going to help you retire and then you come to find out years later up oh, <laughs> inflation taxation devaluation killed my money so now i gotta figure out a new way to bring in more money so if you don't want to be that guy and that guy was your parents in 08 07 and many of you in this room it was you you was the parent in 07 08 that you know you had half a million a million in your 401k and you lost 50 percent and somehow you're still convincing yourself that it makes sense to have that account you're you're somehow still willing to lose 50 percent of your gifts skills and talents in the form of money right I, I just can't make sense of that folks um to me it looks like the greatest failed financial experiment of the 21st century that was started in the 20th century if i'm not mistaken in the 50s 60s or whatever the case may be i am a guy that is cash flow over net worth all day every day cash flow over net worth I would rather cash flow $250,000 a year than have $6.25 million in net worth in a retirement account, right? I did a video on this, cash flow over net worth. You should check it out, right? It'll explain why. But coming back to securities backed line of credit, there's a bank called MNM Bank, another bank called the Bank Corp. 
These are the only two banks that I've uh, seen so far. I'm doing my own homework and they offer these securities backed line of credit. If you have your accounts with Edward Jones, I believe they also offer uh, credit lines against your assets. So sometimes those big bro brokerages might offer things right within their systems. And that could be good too, worth looking into. Uh, but what's nice about the securities back line of credit is I could have my asset continuously growing and then take a portion of it and use it to do velocity banking, attach a checking account, and then money comes in, money comes out. That can sometimes work pretty well. Same thing with a secured personal line of credit or a secured business line of credit. I could use cash on hand capital to obtain a line of credit, get things going, build my credit up. That could be an option, okay? So those are the two banks that I know of so far, Bank Corp, B-A-N-C-O-R-P, and then M&M Bank. Those are cool. I'm seeing clients do that. And then we won't spend too much time on this. Maybe this will be another two, three part series that we can dive into. But then there is something called an insurance backed line of credit. And this has to do with whole life insurance, where you can take the cash value that's been built up in your whole life policy. You got, you have to have a significant amount, uh, a relatively good amount built up in there. I want to say six figures more, maybe, maybe 70 being the lowest, but uh, six figures or more would be ideal of cash value built up and go to the bank like M&M, Bank Corp. There's only two I know so far that uh, kind of specialize. They spend more time offering these tools and you could get a very, very low, we're talking maybe 3.75, maybe less than that. As rates go down, as they go up, obviously they will move. Um, but the advantage here is again, you could have guarantees on your whole life insurance policy. You're earning a guaranteed rate, unaffected compound interest rate. Meanwhile, you can go and use the money through the bank and offset some debt, bring it over here, pay less in interest, recoup cash flow. And if you're doing a business, potentially write off the interest if it's a business line of credit. Okay. It's another great way to eliminate debt is you can restructure your debt from personal to business. Right. And let me just take a few minutes to uh, get that resource for you. Uh, this person is great. His name is Sebastian Boyer. I've worked with him a ton. Um, I'm pretty much done. I, I, I went deep. Um, if there's certain questions, I'll start scrolling up to look for those questions. But that was a case study of, okay, here's how I find my debt tools. Here's how I, you know, think outside the box to redirect cash flow. Right? Cash flow is extremely important right now in the 21st century. All right. So let me get that resource for you. I'm going to put in the chat. Meanwhile, um, if there are questions, let me know. Oh, perfect. Somebody just wrote all the, that was Mary, all the debt tools out. Very clean. <laughs> It's a good thing we're recording, right? <laughs> yep. Yeah, that is a great resource in regards to the uh, rollover. I erased it, but the rollover business startup option. I've had clients do this before where they're like, okay, I'm in a ton of debt. Got it. Here's what I currently make. Here's my cash flow. But I have 800 grand, 500 grand in my 401k, my retirement account. And they've come to the conclusion that that is a very unsafe place for me to store my wealth. Too much fluctuation. I'm going to get hit with taxes later on. The costs are insane to manage the account. Could I roll over that money into a business where I'm now in control of that money? And can you imagine having 200, 300, 400 grand of capital to start a business that could generate an extra few thousand bucks a month for you to help you knock down some debts? And it, you don't have to, you're not paying back the money. It's now in your possession, right? And now you manage it, you steward it, you take care of it, and the goal is to multiply it, right? Can we do that? I, I think it's very possible. I've had clients, you know, do this, have success, and people who are not clients that they found out about it on my channel, and they're like, dude, I took advantage of that. I went that route. Then they use my resource about building business credit. It's a business partner of mine I've been working with for four years now, Kingdom Man, all the way through. And he's out here showing people how to restructure debt um, where maybe the intent isn't to try to just pay it off. But what if we could restructure it, get it out of personal, build personal, helps you build business simultaneously, um, put it in 0% debt and focus on income creation, multiplication of cash flow. If I'm making 4x, 5x, 10x, what I was making prior, couldn't I just write a check and wipe out all my debt in, 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 in one shot? Yeah, 
And now I'm debt free plus more income rather than debt free and broke and having to, you know, start from scratch. So that's that's a you know, it's contradictory to most of the content that I do, but I recognize it because it's a real effective strategy. But it's the ability to, you know, comprehend what is Holy Spirit guiding you to do and you move forward with it. Right. We rely on source, rely on source, rely on source. Put that in the comments, rely on source. Right. <laughs>